and we'll see most of the framework uh, 4.0 versions uh, uh, features, uh, but not completely. And this is the version stack of uh, dot and framework um, in that context. So if you take a look at the features available or released as part of the various versions, as I said, uh, 2.0 is one of the most uh, uh, robust uh, base uh, version uh, on which we have uh, the Windows Forms, ASP.NET and ADO.NET for data access and the base class library here sitting at the bottom and the, and the bottom the blue one is the CLR, a common language runtime, runtime. and we will see most of the uh, CLR and also BCL and of course ADO.NET we will see uh, at the end of the session, ASP.NET we will see at the end of the sessions and WinForms we will see at the end of the sessions. We are actually going to see mostly the base class library uh, in the entire training process because that's the foundation as I've been saying that's the foundation if you know the BCL and CLR how they work uh, and how can you use the BCL to create uh, uh, make use of the various uh, language features then you can do all of the uh, items on uh, on the stack and 3.0 came okay, with uh, the powerful, more powerful features called the WPF, Windows uh, Presentation Foundation, and the WCF, Windows Communication Foundation, and the WF, which is Workflow, uh, and Cardspace. This is again, uh, Cardspace is again uh, is a very, very useful one, especially um, especially when you do with the single sign-on features. So it's, it's related to the security model where you can uh, create your authentic, uh, authentic tickets and uh, pass it on for authentication uh, across the applications. And uh, 3.5 came with again a more, much more powerful feature called LINK. L-I-N-Q stands for Language Integrated Queries and uh, there are three forms to it. Uh, number one is uh, Link to Objects, Link, uh, the, number two is Link to SQL and also uh, the third one is Link to XML. So uh, again, this is a very, very powerful feature. We will see link also uh, when we uh, see the uh, uh, 3.5 features. We are going to see 3.5 features wherein we will focus more uh, on the link, uh, but not as a query, but not, uh, we're going to see how it works internally. Uh, one of the good advantage in my sessions is uh, I will be taking uh, a deep drive into how things work internally, um, wherever possible or wherever feasible, uh, and um, uh, I'll try to uh, take a deep dive. And 4.0, the, the latest one, um, have uh, much, much more powerful features called the Parallel Link and the Task Parallel Library. So this is again uh, very interesting to uh, know. Um, if you look at uh, the, the latest um, multi-core processors available in the market uh, even in the home home based PCs are available with uh, dual core or uh, quad core or more uh, multi-core processors um, so uh, if you look at the server side you can have a, a cores uh, unlimited cores in the data centers so uh, to gain the advantage of these multi-core processors um, so the daughter 4.0 uh, has added up all these parallel link and uh, task parallel libraries. So these are pretty similar to the uh, multi-processing and multi-threading applications, but the, the limitation with the multi-process and multi-threaded applications is that uh, they run on the same core, uh, where the, uh, the which, which goes to your hardware uh, processor. Um, uh, when you, when, if you want to make a take the advantage of the dual core uh, multi core processors and that's when you need to actually specifically write a code um, to gain that kind of, of uh, extendability or scalability uh, solutions. For that you have the uh, parallel link and task parallel library and again it's not complicated completely. If you know the link and there are a couple of new keywords that you need to add it up to add it up to the uh, link to make use of the parallel link. And I'll give you a rough picture. Uh, in normal link in a single core processor, if it, uh, a one million records, uh, uh, if it takes uh, two minutes to process, the same process uh, you can actually scale up uh, with the uh, quad core processor. 
and the same 1 million records can be processed in um, almost uh, 30 seconds. So uh, that's kind of a, a performance improvement you can gain using the parallel link or task parallel library. Um, so that's a very, very strong feature uh, available in um, 4.0. Okay, good. So that's about the version stack. And we'll come down uh, one level down. So this is a very common uh, uh, stack, comp component stacks of dot and framework, which you can see, uh, which you might have already seen um, online. Uh, this is uh, published by the MSDN again. So this shows the uh, the way the components uh, interact with each other and what is used for what. On the left hand, uh, sorry, on the right hand side, if you see the uh, blue box here, the Visual Studio .NET, as I've been saying, this is a, just an IDE, which is interactive uh, development environment, uh, which can be used to manage all these various components of a um, .NET uh, framework. And if you see the complex services, you can actually interact with the complex services with the Visual Studios. Okay, again, I don't want to again overemphasize on Visual Studio at this point. Uh, our emphasis should be on the on the left hand side components, especially the .NET Framework based class libraries. Uh, so these are the libraries which are pretty much a compiled assemblies uh, available uh, as a distributable components and those can be consumed within your application and uh, you have the CL at the bottom uh, which sits on top of the windows or the complex services. Okay, so the CLR is well, again, as you see, it's an intermediate communicator between the Windows or operating system. In other words, it's an operating system, you can say. Uh, in this case, uh, it shows just Windows, but this can be even um, uh, Linux or Unix or anything, any other operating system available in the market. And it has its own uh, uh, operating system specific CLR that can understand um, the operating system. And on top of that, we have the base class libraries, which are uh, all these subsets uh, are the uh, DLLs that are available uh, or distributable components that you can actually uh, install on the given uh, operating system as an installer, like an MSI installer. And of course, they are specific to uh, the, the given uh, platform. The ASP.NET sits on top of the base class library and again Windows Forms sits on top of the base class library. So this tag again gives you the dependencies on one on the other. So although they are decoupled from each other, but they are dependent on each other. So that what it means is um, CLR uh, cannot run on its own because it still needs a oper Windows operating system to run. Okay, so that's the base thing. So of course the operating system is the base thing, it should be there and CLR can only sit on top of it and at the same time base class libraries uh, can not interact with Windows operating system directly. So they need an intermediate which is called a CLR. So that's the relationship uh, this diagram is showing. Okay, so it, not only this diagram, if you down the line, if you get into any job or uh, any project, um, if you see any uh, such architectural diagrams or components diagram or stack diagrams, uh, one thing you need to understand is the, the stack, the way they are stacked on one on the other, one on top of the other, uh, indicates that they, there is a dependencies on each other. Okay, and ASP.NET is dependent again on the base class libraries and of course, as I said, we will be, uh, we'll be talking more about the base class libraries and in the applications, we will make use of them. And common language specific uh, specifications, again, this comes uh, uh, one of the interoperability feature that's available. We will see what is CLS again. And on top of that, we have the languages on the various languages. So this is where the language interoperability is possible because the language sits on, to on the topmost uh, in the ladder. And of course, the, all the others sit on down to the others. So these are the component stack uh, of .NET Framework. And this is a common language infrastructure. So what this indicates is uh, the various languages as we see on the top of the ladder, uh, C sharp as a language, or VB dot as a language, J sharp as a language, or F sharp, which is a function based language again. And of course, um, you have more uh, Python or Ruby and so on. 
Um, so there are a ton of other uh, um, .NET specific languages and each of the language have their own compiler. So once you compile the respective code with the given compiler, um, it's going to emit out a CLI. It's called Common Intermediate Language, uh, which I believe most of you are familiar with what is a CI, uh, Common Intermediate Language, CIL. In other words, it's sometimes referred to as a MSIL, Microsoft Intermediate Language, and also simply IL, Intermediate Language. Okay, so this could be, uh, this is, not could be, this is one of the most common questions people do ask in the interviews. What is an intermediate language? Remember the keyword language. So it's a language by itself. Normally, traditionally, other compilers, like if you see C program, if you compile the C program uh, with the respect to compiler, uh, it's going to emit you, emit out an EXE that can execute itself on a given operating system. So the EXE will have the binary um, instructions to the operating systems directly, which an operating system can understand. So in .NET, uh, it's completely different. So when you compile your code, it's not going to give you a machine understandable binary instruction code. It's going to give you a something called uh, MSIL. So MSIL itself is another language just like a C-sharp, just like a VB.NET or J-sharp, MSIL itself is another language. If you learn MSIL, then you can actually write code in MSIL, as simple as that. So again, saying that, what, it, what I'm referring to is you can actually bring up your own language like, uh, for example, uh, if I'm referring to myself, I can bring uh, into uh, my own language, saying Shaker Sharp, uh, and uh, put my own instructions, put my own uh, data types, uh, put my own language syntax, uh, literals, and everything, and uh, build my own compiler, because my compiler understand my code, and my compiler is going to emit out an MSIL, then I can plug in my language into the industry, so into the .NET framework. So that's how it is uh, possible. So that's how we have J Sharp, uh, we have F Sharp, and so on. So many other languages that you can plug into the model. So MSIL is the core thing, which is uh, understood by the CLR. So that's why this is called a common uh, language infrastructure. So this piece is called the common infrastructure or language infrastructure wherein you have the MSIL and the common language runtime. So once this MSIL is available, the CLR is going to compile it to the binary instructions to the operating system which is going to be your zeros and ones in um, the binary language if you remember. So that's what the instructions are going to be uh, executed on your given operating system. So again, given operating system is again a bold and underline. Uh, the CLR can be a platform specific. So what it means is uh, I can write my C sharp code uh, once and use the uh, respective, uh, uh, of course, a CSC, which is the C sharp compiler to emit out the MSIL. And this MSIL, I can actually deploy on the given operating system like say Unix or Windows or Linux and so on. And the CLR is a platform specific version. So the CLR can understand MSIL and the platform specific CLR can also understand the respective platform. For example, Windows based CLR can understand Windows instructions so that it's going to read out the intermediate language instructions and translate it to the respective platform specific instructions. So CLR is a platform specific version and uh, it's between the mutual agreement with Microsoft and other vendors available in the market who produce the hardware peripherals and also the software uh, like the um, Unix, uh, uh, Linux and other things. Um, so the, the CLR comes as part of their uh, factory output. Uh, so once you buy a given uh, Linux operating system, uh, it comes with the built-in Linux uh, CLR. Again, CLR has its own versioning, and uh, 
normally we don't really uh, care, uh, care about the CLR version in ideal scenarios and that's when the operating system support also need to be looked at the other way I showed you in the first slide. So the default in Windows we have here is the, the support for uh, 3.5 uh, framework and again if you see the 4.0 framework is not available by default in any operating systems today. So if you are getting a Windows uh, 7 operating system, of course if you download uh, 2010, we use 2010, then you will have the 4.0 framework as part of it. But if you are using we 20, 2008 uh, in Windows uh, 7 and you want to use uh, framework 4.0, then it's not available because Visual Studio comes or Windows 7 comes by default with 3.5. So in that case, you can of course go and download um, the framework 4.0, install it in your machine and also the given server and uh, make use of it in uh, Visual Studio 2008. But of course, there are some um, issues with that. Uh, there is again a hard fix. The reason is uh, uh, Visual Studio 2008, to in order to make it a forward compatible, you need to actually uh, install a couple of other additional uh, utilities or a couple of other installers to make it forward compatible to the 4.0 version. But again, it's doable. Okay, so that's all about uh, the common in, uh, language infrastructure. So it comes with the CIL uh, or IL itself and CLR.